Hello and welcome to ACIT. My name is Rohit Pardasani and I am going to be your instructor for CCIE routing switching. I have four CCIEs in one in route switch, in service provider, in security and in collaboration. I am also a Cisco certified systems instructor. What we're going to learn today in our class is common problems that you may face in your CCIE lab exam with respect to authentication, authentication between two devices when they're running maybe a routing protocol. Let me quickly share my screen and show you my topology. All right, so here's my topology. I have uh, R1, R2, R3, R4, R5, and R6. IP addressing has been pre-configured. OSPF has also been pre-configured. We have area 3, area 1, area 0, and area 2. To connect area 3 to the backbone area, I have already pre-configured virtual links between R2 and R4. All right, so let's do authentication in OSPF. Now, as you know that OSPF supports three different kinds of authentication. We have clear text, we have MD5, and we have null authentication. Besides the three different types of authentication, we can configure authentication in OSPF in two different ways. We could configure interface-based authentication, or we could configure area-based, which is process-based. So if I configure interface base, it means that that device will force the neighbor on that interface for authentication. If I configure area based authentication, it means that I will force all my neighbors in that area for authentication. Let's configure area based authentication on R5 for area zero. Now to configure authentication, assumingly we are doing clear text, we need to go to R5 and go inside the OSPF process and issue the command area zero authentication. If you were doing MD5, you need to add the word MD5. Let's do clear text at this point of time. So I'm going to go back and say area zero authentication. What this command does, it activates the OSPF authentication mechanism. Now, since, since we're doing this under the area, under the OSPF process and not on the interface, R5 will force all his neighbors for authentication. And you would see that the neighborship between R5 and R4 and R5 and R6 would go down. I haven't defined the password yet. However, you would notice if I do a show IP OSPF neighbor, my neighborship has gone down. The reason it has gone down is because R5 is saying that I need authentication for all my neighbors in area zero. R5 has how many neighbors? R5 has one neighbor, which is R4, and the second neighbor, which is R6. Let's do a debug. IP OSPF agency and see what message we see. All right, so let's do a debug IP OSPF agency and see what message we see. Here you will notice that we receive a message which says that I received a packet from R4 but mismatch authentication type. We use type 1. Type 1 is clear text and they use R4 uses type 0 which means no authentication. So my problem right now is the remote peer which is R4 and R6 they're using type 0 which means no authentication mechanism has been configured and R5 is using type 1 which is clear text. 
So type 0 means no authentication mechanism has been activated. Type 1 is clear text authentication mechanism and type 2 is MD5. So uh, let's go back and see what can be done to rectify this. All right, so let's go to R6 and activate authentication mechanism on R6 as well. All right, so this time on R6, I would do this on the interface. It doesn't really matter whether you have one side interface, one side area based, as long as the authentication mechanism is the same and as long as the password is the same, your neighborship would come up. However, just remember one thing that interface based means that I would force authentication for just my one neighbor who is on that interface. Area based means I would force all my neighbors. So let's do interface based. So interface Ethernet 0 by 0 dot 56. And on this interface to activate the authentication mechanism, my command would be IP OSPF authentication. This activates clear text authentication and if you need MD5, you need to add the word message digest. Let's just do clear text. So authentication, enter. The minute I do this, if I go back to R5 and look at my message, which I was seeing earlier. Earlier I was seeing that we are using type 1 and R4 is using type 0. Let's see what message we receive from R6. If you notice, I am not seeing any messages from R6. The reason I'm not seeing any messages is because R6 and R5, they have already formed neighbors. Let's quickly verify that by doing a show IP OSPF neighbor. Now, even though R5 and R6 have not been configured for a password, I have just activated the authentication mechanism. Well, if you have the authentication mechanism and if you do not have the password, the mechanism does not take effect. However, if I have the password defined on any one device, for example, if I go to R5, and on the interface that connects to R6, I say IP OSPF authentication key. Let's use Cisco. Now you would notice that my neighborship with R6 again goes down. But this time you would see a different message. This time you see that you don't see the mismatch authentication type because authentication type has been configured on both sides. However, between R5 and R6, it's the key that is missing. So you see the message, mismatch authentication key. This indicates that you have the authentication mechanism. The only thing missing is the authentication password. Let's quickly configure the authentication password as well. Now to configure the authentication password, I'm going to go back to R6 and on the interface, give the command IP OSPF authentication key Cisco. Remember, authentication password or the key is always on the interface. Mechanism could be interface, could be area based. I hope this video was informative to you and thank you for viewing.